Before we get too far into the videos in this set, I'd like to go through one or two settings and preferences because it's quite important as we go through the videos that your screen looks exactly like mine. So there's one or two changes I'm going to suggest that we make. Down on the bottom right of the thumbnails when we look at images in the slide list we can see our slide duration and we can see that by default the slide duration is five seconds but if we go to the timeline we can see just how that five seconds is made up. If we take a look at this image here I'll move the cursor right to the start. Presently the slide duration is measuring from the first instant we start to see this flower which is pretty early on after we leave this one here. So it's right on that 10 second point. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's measuring from when this image first starts to dissolve onto the screen, but it's measuring only to when the next image starts to dissolve onto the screen. And as you can see, at that point, we can still see this image. In fact, we still see this image right to the extreme end of that transition there. So really, our slide duration should be seven seconds. The two seconds fade, three seconds fully on screen, and two seconds to remove this image from the screen. So I'm going to make a suggestion we change this because I think it helps when it looks exactly the same on the front of the slides here as it will do when we open up the objects and animation screen. If I were to open this image up into the objects and animation screen and I were to put my cursor at the end, I can see that the value between 10 seconds and 17 seconds is 7 seconds because the objects and animation screen gives us a time reading from the very start to the last point when we see this image because we've got the fade here of the next image on screen. So what we're going to do is to make a change to make sure the 7 seconds we see here is reflected here. We can do that by going to settings, preferences and we need project. We need to tick the box to show full slide duration and also the one to keep full slide duration. And while we're here, I'm going to suggest we also remove the tick here in the scaling of keyframes. The style of animation which is controlled by keyframes is carefully timed in most of the work that I do. What I don't want to happen is if I create some animation with a slide duration of 5 or 7 seconds, and then I decide I want to add four or five seconds more. I don't want that addition of my slide duration to stretch the keyframes and move them into different locations. It's much easier, I feel, to change them to those locations if and when we need them. So these two changes we need to make and click OK. And as soon as I do that, you can see now the slide duration is recording the full default 7 seconds. It's only showing 5 seconds there because I don't yet have another image for the software to actually measure. Whenever we start to animate an image we need to go to the objects and animation screen. Well if our slide duration here is 7 seconds when I go here the 7 seconds is reflected from this keyframe and if I created a keyframe at this end there's our seven seconds. But by default, the keyframes are being measured from the start of the slideshow. Now I've only got a couple of images here for demonstration purposes, but if we were three quarters of the way through a real slideshow, this keyframe here could be one minute and 57 seconds or something along those lines. What I like to do is to measure these keyframes in each of the slides that I open from naught to whatever I choose as the slide duration. And to do that, if we go to the tools down here, we just need to untick this to show the global time of keyframes. So if I remove that tick, 
Now every time we come into the objects and animation screen, there we're seeing reflected the slide duration, and in our case here, is still set at the default of 7 seconds. So I happen to know that if I'm going to create some animation, it may take 4 seconds for that animation to take place, so when I put my keyframe in position, I can easily locate that 4 second point. Much more difficult to do when you've got to start adding seconds on to 1 minute 47. Now all of these changes as you've seen, none of them are cast in stone, very quick and easy to revert them if you find you have a need. But at least as we go through these particular videos, we're all going to be looking at the same values.